Hey, paddle enthusiasts, welcome to Paddle Smash Academy. My name is Sez, paddle club owner and entrepreneur. Next to me is Julian, paddle master coach, and we're all about paddle. Whether you're new to the sport or an experienced player, you've come to the right place. Our goal is to provide you with paddle news, tournament outcomes, product reviews, and video lessons to take your game to the next level. So grab your paddle and let's get started at Paddle Smash Academy. One of the things that, that it will be good to, to discuss and debate, it's about, you know, the growth of paddle. I mean, where do we, do we see him going from here? Now you're saying that it's overexposed or... I think, I think it's a little oversaturated. Um, I mean, I only say that because... We have, you know, a couple more clubs opening up. Um, you know, you have one, and everybody's basing it on one club because they can't get courts or what have you, and it's always busy. But they've been there for a long time. You know, when COVID happened, it just kind of like blew up there. Um, and we're talking it, about specifically about Winwood. Yeah, I mean, they have the name Winwood. I mean, it's good location, great name. Um, they got everything going for it. They got a lot of celebs that go there um so uh, you know everybody bases on that it's like man you know and they're trying to crunch their numbers in their head this and that and now we got other investors opening up but you only have so many paddle players right because this is still kind of new so you open up another club and another club and another club now you're kind of saturated right so if you call winwood and try to get a core you can't but then you just call ultra real paddle and you can so if there was a lot of demand, I'm talking about, you know, the, the hours and times of, of demand, you know, after six or after seven. But if you go there and they're all packed and you can't get any any courts, then you could see that, OK, there's enough, you know, uh, paddle players. Uh, there's enough demand to fill them. Um, but then you got other days during the day, you know, and that they're empty uh, as well. well. I so I think it's I think it's getting oversaturated. I think if you do more clubs, then what? It's just. It's too many well, clubs. well, yeah, but I, I think it's it's you 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 I think you're taking the uh, the look at it that the worst case scenario, and, I, and we got to take in consideration that we, we, Winwood has been there for since 2015. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's been growing. And I can tell you that I was there when Winwood was pretty much open, and it was dead. You know what I mean? And they were like the, the pioneers in, mm -hmm. in in the paddle world here in in, in South Florida, the, the United States. Now, when you have the reserve or ultra, th they've been open for a month or so. So they're, they're completely new. So quite a, f a lot of the people don't know about the place yet. So we have to let them, we, we have to give them time to growth and, and for people to have different options. Because like, sure. you know, the, the, the example that, that we were discussing is in every, in every town in the world, you have pizzerias. So what is the difference between one good pizzeria and the other the other pizzeria? The good one is probably you like the pizza, you like the service, you like what, how they offer, what they offer and all that. And at the end of the day, this will be the same thing. You know, we know that reserve is targeted to a, more, a much more high-end people, high earners, high-income people, where Wynwood and, and Real and Ultra, they're a different crowd. So I think the, the, the targets are different and the way you promote it is different. You know, we can compare Winwood with the rest because Winwood already paid the price of growing. Yeah, oh, yeah without a doubt. Um, and I, I think that's I think we're talking more about a demand uh, versus um, service. Right. So you can always provide great service. But if the demand's not there, you're just not going to fill in those those courts. Right. So if you have, um, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I think if you if if I think we have I think we're oversaturated. Um, that, that's that's my my personal that's opinion. That's your personal I know, opinion. I, know. Okay. <laughs> I believe that, you know, gradually, you know, um, it was growing organically. And I think with, you know, COVID happening, it kind of gave it that boost. It got some good exposure now. Uh, to and it got a lot of things going on. World Paddle Tour was in, in in Miami. I think that really helped get some good exposure there. Um, you have the Premier Paddle now, um, you know, uh, and also buying out part of you know World Paddle Tour. I think that was 
also uh, great for the sport. But at the end of the day, you just need more paddle players. So if you're building more courts and uh, faster than there are being paddle players, then, you know, then again, you get over that you have to wait. And how long can you wait, right? So you build a paddle court, you know, a club, and you want to fill those spots up. But if there's not enough players, then, you know, you have to then educate them. You have to invest in management, bringing them in here. Um, and that takes time, you know. So every, you know, investors are going to, you know, wonder when the ROI is. is I know, know. But, but you have to be patient, too. I think, you know, now you're getting, you know, with that pessimistic overlook of everything. It's like <laughs> the chicken and the egg. Yeah, yeah. I want to have more, more eggs, but right. you need the chickens so tell, tell that to the investors well yeah that, that, yeah but that's a different subject i mean we're talking about the growth of paddle you know right, nationwide right, right, right. and locally i think it's for you to make paddle growth very simple you need the courts i mean without the courts you can't create paddle players so sure. the first setup it's it's good i mean now we're having more paddle courts now it's our jobs as, as paddle coaches or paddle enthusiasts or, or paddle you know podcasters to send the message and and start bringing people in into the sport. I, hear I mean, that, I hear that all the time. Build it and they will come. Exactly. When and I when I hear that as an investor, <laughs> I run away. <laughs> I'm more of get the market first <laughs> and then build what you're gonna build. Yes. But you know, uh, in, in something new like this, it's very hard to you know create a market and explain to them what it is. You know, until they actually see it, physically see it. So it's a very unique situation. I I I. I what I'm saying, I think what I'm saying is that at this time, we might be oversaturated, but in time, there'll be more and more paddle players going on. Um, but if we get more and more clubs, you know, then it's like, you know, what's going to happen? What I hate to happen is that, you know, there's so many clubs opening up within one place. And I think I think the solution is just kind of broadening them out, going far exactly. out, 20, 30 miles out. I mean, there's areas, I, people come in from different towns, like half an hour 45 an hour away to come and play and you know and if they were just spread out a little bit more i think it would be you know well I, I give you a personal example yesterday i was playing i was playing paddle no saturday i was playing paddle at the ritz carlton and i and i finished playing paddle and, and these two couples walk in you know we start talking and all that they're from connecticut and they were telling me, oh, my God, we're so excited. You know, we're beginners, but we love the sport. And now they're putting new, but they're putting paddle courts in our country clubs in, in, in Connecticut. Yeah. I said, wow, well, that's that's a beautiful sign. That's a yeah. great sign that now Miami is not, not only a hotbed. Now you see these little hot pockets everywhere, especially in the Northeast, mm -hmm. Midwest and, and, you know, Texas and California. Uh that's super healthy. I mean, the growth has to be organically, slowly, and eventually will catch on. Look, let's 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 talk about pickleball. Yeah. I mean, five years ago, pickleball was was not even on my radar. Right. It wasn't not even on the radar of anyone. And now it's it's huge. I, I mean, mean, now it's, it's, it's on ESPN. It's on the ten tennis channel. There's a professional circuit. I know a couple of my friends, they quit tennis. Now they're becoming professional pickable oh players gosh, yeah. and they're making more money in pickable than in tennis. Well, so in, in Connecticut, uh, when I go back, all the, 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 the parks all have pickle ball courts. Yeah. Uh, all, all, I mean, three, four parks full yeah. of people and it's free. Yeah. You know, it's a public park and they all go there and they play. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's incredible. So you got it low cost, which is nothing. Low cost to start, it's just a paddle, maybe get one for 50 bucks and it's a couple of balls. And, um, you know, and there's a whole group there and it's easy to start. Yeah. You know, that's pretty hard to beat. Yeah. Well, you know, paddle is um, pretty, pretty, easy, pretty easy to start. Paddle is a different, I, I, I mean, people are going to pick, pickleball players are going to hate me for saying this, but I play both. And, you know, I think it just takes a little bit more physical strength and ability to play a paddle than those pickles. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And some people are going to hate me for saying this, yes. but you know, yeah, there's a small percentage that have that, you know, they're, they're way advanced, but in the, in the pickle, you get the majority beginners to, you know, maybe amateurs, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. you get a lot of older groups and people who are, they're moving around. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, obviously there's a different section there are professionals, which we're not really talking about yeah. that. Uh, with paddle, I mean, I think it takes a little bit more physical strength, you know, ability. Um, I mean, you're running around; it's a lot faster. You have different strokes, it's a different animal, different animal. Yeah, I see, you know? but, uh, but 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 I, I seen uh, 
we got to look, the, you know, the micro and the, and the micro, you know, aspects of this. You know, what's happening around the world with paddle is something that I've never seen anything like it, you know, in, in any sports. That growth and that expansion worldwide is just tremendous, you know. Uh, and you see in some places that are getting saturated and all that. But I think that's the healthy part of it, too. Uh, same thing in the United States. You know, you have tennis courts everywhere. Now, how do you monetize tennis courts? By providing programs, events, tournaments, clinics, you know, junior tournaments and things like that. Paddle is going the same way. Pickable is going the same way. You know, you're going to have oversaturated courts. Fine. So how do you start monetizing these courts? By offering different events, programs, clinics, so, lessons, you, things like that. You made a very good point. Um, it, it we're in Connecticut, where I'm originally from, there's one, two, three, four, four, four tennis clubs within a five mile radius. And they're empty. Yeah. Empty. I think two already, already uh, out of business. The other one has so sub, sub least commercial 85%. commercial clubs. Yeah. Okay. Has least eighty five percent of the clubs. So all yeah. these different things. So they they, they got to survive, and it's just kind of like I don't know a dying sport <laughs> or well, well, oversaturated yes. of many too many clubs yes. in one spot. And here's the beautiful thing about what is happening right now with the, in the record world is that all these tennis clubs commercial. You have two options of of tennis clubs. You know the commercials and the privates. Privates are country clubs. You know, private clubs and things like that. Then you have the commercial clubs that they need to make money. So in the past, it was just tennis and maybe they had a gym, there are yoga classes and Pilates and all that. Yeah. Not what they doing and they, what they supposed to be doing. Start taking courts away. You know that out of your ten, eight, ten courts, only half are getting used. Take the other half, convert them into pickable, yeah. paddle. And now you don't know, you don't have a tennis a tennis club anymore. You have a racket club anymore. Yeah. That, I a, see that going on right now. At place where now you offer three different sports and not just only one, three different racket sports, and now you're targeting three different uh, memberships. And that's happening right now in country clubs around the, the nation, where that now they're adding pickable courts, and now they're figuring figuring it out that oh my god, we can monetize that part too. That's a type of membership. If you go to the northeast. They've been always, all the country clubs, the high-end country clubs, they were always being golf and tennis. Yeah. Now they're adding pickleball. So now they are golf, tennis, and pickleball. Yeah. Now they're com- becoming racket clubs, not only yeah. just tennis clubs. That's I see that happening. That's a trend right now. And it, I, think it, that's, I think that's awesome. Because number yeah. one, they can introduce new sport like paddle. Number two, it helps out that, that, that club. Because, uh, you know, they, you know, at the end of the day, it has to be profitable. So, but I think that's that's smart, and and I'm hoping that they're gonna pull more paddle, uh, you know, um, courts in some of these tennis clubs. Um, that would be great. When I was over here in, in uh, USTA, a tennis center in, in Orlando, that's what I saw. Yeah, they had tennis court, they had pickle, and they had um, paddle. Yeah, but the funny amazing. part is they have. It, I, I, I don't know if you have ever been in the USTA national campus. They have 100 tennis courts for paddle. And I think, I know, and I, I think like six or seven pickleball. So well, one hundred tennis courts. My <laughs> God, how do you feel to one hundred tennis courts? I know. Well, they'll, they'll adjust. You know, <laughs> yeah. they have to, right? And they will have not to be yeah. used. And they see that hey, these these two other sports are. are Imagine more the real estate. I mean, one hundred tennis courts. I mean, wow, wow. It's just that place is huge. It's a whole city. I know it ten, because the tennis courts occupy a lot of space. I was there last year or the year before. Imagine they give you court no- number 99. You got to take a bus to get there. You take, <laughs> it was like three months away for you to get there. Yeah, a little trolley or a you know, golf cart to get over there. Yeah, it comes for that. Oh, man, it's amazing. But, you know, this is all, you know, just our thoughts of, of paddle, the clubs, yes. um, you know, uh, new paddle players. Uh, how, how do you gain new paddle players? You know, it's education, you know. Uh, do you want to get started in paddle? You know, good come, coaching. Yeah, come to our, uh, you know, to our um, YouTube channel, Paddle yes. Academy three hundred five, and we have videos from just basic forehand to more advanced uh, plays, um, yeah. and and get get uh, inspired, yeah. um, you know, and get on the court and do some exercise, you know, move move around, yeah, uh, get social. Um, these are all the benefits to playing paddle. Um, and uh, let, let me give this this number, which is very very important for you guys to know. Sixty minutes of playing tennis, you actually play for 
you know, 16 to 17 minutes because the court is huge and you have to pick up balls and you get to play. In paddle, 60 minutes of playing paddle, you're actually playing 47 minutes, between 45 to 47 minutes, okay? That's the actual exercise, actual hitting the ball back and forth. So that's a huge difference between 17 minutes of actually hitting the ball to 47, 46 minutes. So that's, you know, when we compare apples to apples, that's very interesting to know that number because you are getting more physical exercise by playing paddle in a smaller space than playing tennis in a bigger space. And that's a workout. And, and that's, that's a definitely workout. a workout. And you know what? You don't even see it as a workout. I mean, you're playing with your friends. Uh, you're having fun. You're joking around. I mean, that ball is going to come off the back wall. So it's not going it, to, you know, the, 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 the shots, the points are taking a lot longer exactly and then than in, in pickle or um or tennis I, in, in in paddle i mean you see i mean if you've seen the finals i mean yes like yesterday's finals of the uh, premier paddle there were points that were the ball was going over the net 15 20 25 times uh, and the average rate of playing paddle when intermediate advanced level you're talking about four five six seven times the ball going back and forth we're in tennis one two three if you're a decent player you know, serve, return, one, one, that's it, point, it's over. Uh, yeah. So that's a huge, huge factor for you guys to take into consideration. And that's why paddle is growing so fast worldwide and it's getting a, a lot of attention from people from all over the world. It is, and it's it's easy it's easy to start. I mean, in, unlike tennis where, I mean, you really need, you know, months and months and maybe even years to be able to play and bring the ball back and forth create a rally um and and and, and paddle you're you're able to do that very quickly as, as long as you have some some basic skills you can actually get a game one get a rally going yeah and i think that's you know uh one of the things that uh, attracts uh this this game to you know to people who want to play sports from my coaching experience i mean i've been coaching tennis and now i've been coaching paddle for quite a few years and let me tell you, I get a beginner who never picked up a, 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 ten, a, rack, a tennis racket, right? It will take months and thousands of dollars for them to really get the technique going, okay? In paddle, I get someone who never pick, grabbed a paddle racket before, never played any sports before. Within half an hour, they're playing paddle and they're having the best time of their lives. It's easier to learn. Very difficult to master, but easy to learn. So that's why... I always encourage everyone to try paddle because you're going to have the best time of your life and you're going to be doing a sport that it's going to be you're going to be doing forever. And and you get somebody who's already been playing tennis, squash or racquetball. They can just come right into this. Yes. You know, and 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 just really transition, you know, uh fairly easy, you know, but even if they don't, they can still get in and and start playing very very quickly. And that that's that was somebody like me. Yeah. You know, playing tennis, squash, and racquetball. You know, I'm I'm looking for another sport. I mean, racquetball was is a dying sport. It's very hard to find people to play. Uh, squash, there's not a lot of squash. You know, um, courts. You know, and you know, you have tennis, which again is very difficult to get. Uh, you know, a partner that is your level that you can socialize with. Um, that's always been very difficult. Um, so you know, paddle has been a great uh, sport to transition into from from tennis you know you have more people playing it you can find uh, you know more people your level um you know and if if you're off a level then you know you can kind of switch the teams around so that way you know you can still play um so and you're playing doubles and the difference with you know tennis and and paddle is that you know in tennis you're usually playing singles you know so you're very far away from your player you're you're, you're playing singles you know, in in paddle, you're 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 playing with doubles, as what you call in tennis. You, know, you got two people there, and each side has uh, their responsibility. You know, so you, it's like a team. You have a team there. You know, and and that's what makes it more social. You're closer to them. You're talking to them. You're talking to the other, uh, um, you know, people. Your your opponents uh, makes things just a lot more fun. Thanks for tuning in to Paddle Smash Academy. We hope you find our videos informative and helpful in improving your game and learning all things paddle. And if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you never miss a video from us. So until next time, keep practicing, keep improving, and keep on smashing that paddle. See you in the court.